Kansas State and uh, what TCU is still doing. Dennis Dodge, CBS Sports, who's been on a conference call, the Transformational Committee with News, and Dr. Livingstone, Baylor president, on that committee. Dennis, thanks for your time. We appreciate you uh, being a part of it, juggling what you, you have on your mind. Anything in particular from that conference call that you would mind sharing with us? Well, the, the, the biggest thing is after you know, at more than a year in care, careful contemplation that all everybody wants to know about this recommendation to grow uh, postseason by 25% in all sports. Um, I think there'll be some significant pushback from the board on that regarding uh, men's basketball uh, because there's a, there's a thought in 25% more of 68 would be 87 teams in the, in the, uh, in the bracket. Um, because I think the average the average is way low in basketball and football as it pertains to other sports in the NCAA. But be that as it may, there is concern that if you go from 68 to, say, 87, uh, the best team still won't get in. It'll still be the fifth team from you know, the ACC or the sixth team from the Big 12. And that won't help those those schools to get automatic qualifiers to St. Peter's because some of that will be removed uh, in this proposal, I believe. So that's, that's the big, uh, that's the big, uh, you know, takeaway from it. There's enhanced student athlete benefits, insurance, health, uh, stuff like that. Um, they didn't go as far as people thought, but uh, I think the basketball piece is interesting. Yeah. Dennis basketball is kind of interesting to me in that I, there's been a disconnect between the fans of college athletics and the administrators of college athletics, probably as long as there have been college athletics, but no bigger one than we've talked about at length with the football playoff. Well, they finally kind of met the fans where they wanted to be with the 12 team playoff and the expansion there. Yeah. It feels to me like they're trying to carry that over. Look, you don't need to supersize everything. Some things are great just the way they are. Well, let's be clear. The NCAA has absolutely nothing to do with the football, mm -hmm. uh, the football playoff and the expansion. So, um, yeah, I may, there may have been some ancillary impact on that, but that thing was, you know, that was decided by those commissioners, by the television consultants, um, and the feedback they got from that. So, uh, yeah, is, are, yeah, but again, are there enough of the 131 teams so that enough of them have access to the system? And I think by expanding, you at least, you know, lessen the prospect of a loss. You know, uh, there's enough of those going on about monopolies, uh, unfair practices. So I think the more the merrier. In fact, I'm kind of working on a piece this week. It's like, you know, we're how, how before how long before we get 16 um, if this thing really takes off. Dennis, uh, looking at the the on the field, uh, obviously we got a national championship game set up now. What were your thoughts on TCU's win over Michigan, and and how big of a smile do you think Brett Yormark had the other night? I can tell you I was there in person. It's pretty big. Um, <laughs> no, it was great. Um, I, I thought, you know, I was as surprised as Michigan was about how athletic TCU was, uh, particularly in their defensive front. Now, they've got some dudes there. D. Winter, I think, was I think the defensive player of the game. Uh, Dylan Hudson was really – Dylan Horton, excuse me, was really, really good. There was constant pressure on J.J. McCarthy. They shut down the run game, at least in the second half. At least, you know what? At least after that initial 54-yard run by Donovan Edwards, Michigan only averaged 3.3 yards per rush the rest of the game. So, and, you know, I, has, has Georgia been worn? I don't know. Uh, I do know that TCU thinks they've, they've got better than a puncher's chance to win the national championship because they're there. This has never happened before. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this level, playing for a championship has, hasn't happened since BYU in 84. And even then, I can argue that uh, you guys probably know this. BYU in 84 was a major college team in a major conference in the WAC. It was considered a major conference in, uh, in Division 1A. So TCU getting there is, is bigger than BYU, bigger than Boise because they never got there. It's bigger than Cincinnati because Cincinnati didn't play the schedule that TCU did uh, this year. It's compared to Cincinnati last year. A better program. Now, yeah, it's a Power 5 program. But still a little old TCU playing for a national championship. So I, 
I thought I wrote yesterday that TCU is, is the first true Cinderella in college football. You know, I you you think about that because college basketball seems to have them quite a bit, of course, from the opening weekend and sometimes all the way to the Final Four. You make a good point. We were discussing this for the Big 12. How critical last year Baylor, Oklahoma State played for the title. Baylor wins the Sugar Bowl 12-2, and two, number five in the country. And now TCU trumps that, that these are teams in the Big 12 that will be a part of the Big 12 future and not a couple of teams or one or two of the teams that are walking out the door. Yeah, it, it had a direct impact on Brett Yormark being able to do that deal. Uh, early and getting line ahead of the Pac-12 for real, for more money than they were making with Texas and Oklahoma. I mean, it, they said it out loud that um, I forgot who, uh, and I wrote the story that they said out loud, the rights holders, that the reason the Big 12 is so valued is because of Baylor, Oklahoma State last year. You know, they those are the two teams playing for the championship. Whatever you had this year, four or five ranked teams, obviously TCU emerged from that. Um, and it looks like this is going to be a really good competitive conference in, in college football. Now, whether, whether we even use the term power five anymore because the SEC and Big Ten is up for debate. But I, I think that's the reason the Big 12 is in great shape, uh, going forward with expansion is because the, the existing teams have proven more than, uh, competitive. You know, if your worst team was Kansas last year, Kansas went to a bowl, um, and started five and up. Dennis, do you think that the talent gap is closing between schools like Georgia and TCU? Now, it's not going to be exponential, but the transfer portal is a great equalizer for most everybody else. I get that you're, you you can be Georgia, and you know the transfer portal can come and go, and in some years, like this year, it didn't really matter for them. They, they didn't get what they wanted out of the portal, so they took no players, but uh, it does seem like that maybe the gap is closing a, slightly. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think with the portal and, and NIL, it's Akron's still gonna, not going to have a very good program, and Alabama's going to have the best, and Georgia's going to have the best. And, and the, the thing that keeps them all in line, uh, the thing that limits it, is you can only sign 25 of them. So it's not like you can get 200 guys. So how does that change from what was the old system? Well, it really doesn't. Um, now you're just bidding in a different way. You know, the bidding was underground before, and I'm kind of doing that piece for tomorrow uh, with, what, with what Jeff Trailer tweeted last week, I think it was. Uh, but now it's, it's above ground and it's legal. So, you know, it's an open bidding market. It's never been more transactional uh, than it is right now with, uh, with NIL and the portal. So I, I don't know if the gap is closed. Um, I, I think this in the TCU Georgia game, I, I think the story is going in is about is more strategic uh, and less about talent and whether TCU can hang with Georgia because they prove they absolutely can. So as in any big championship game, we should be talking about, hey, what's Leslie going to do with the 3-3-5? What's Kirby going to do with his position group, which is defensive back against Max, instead of saying, oh, TCU can't possibly can No, they can't. You mentioned Jeff Trailer's comments. Look forward to, to reading your piece. But how do comments like that go over nowadays, uh, given the the NIL market and kind of the, the way that it is, it is now? Is that something that you think was applauded behind the scenes by coaches? Or is that something where, like, hey, if you're not going to name names, then what's the point of saying anything? Like, how, how does that come across? Yeah, I don't know how it was received by coaches, but I'm kind of getting tired of these coaches doing that. You know, God loves Jeff Trailer. He's the salt of the earth. You know, you have Pat Narduzzi now popping off about mm-hmm. what, you know, what Drake May got. Well, Drake May doesn't play in Pittsburgh, you know. So if, if you're going to do that, name names. Name names at USC when they took Jordan Asson. What was the number? They hijacked him. Because, because in that profession, like, you know, I hate to say this, organized crime, there's like this code of silence. You know, we'll, we'll handle it on this thing. You know, we're not we're not going to rat out our fellow coaches. Well, then you got to live with the circumstances, yep. and these are the circumstances right now. What do you think would happen, Dennis, to a coach that actually published any kind of text messages? Um, well, it's getting real close to that because uh, a lot of these coaches are so frustrated. What would happen to them? I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe he would. You know, then there would be scrutiny from other programs in 
on his program and he would be out. But you know what? We saw it with Nick and Jimbo. The difference being, these are probably their most powerful people on campus at their university and in their state. There are no repercussions. You know, it was it was said, uh, you know, that they, they were out there with like this melodrama. And then they kind of just made up and that was it. You know, they, you can't hurt each other. Two, two aircraft carriers going after each other aren't going to sink. <laughs> I'm usually for destruction. So, but if it was, Oh, I think of, uh, I don't know, think of a program revealing, uh, you know, a uh, text from an SEC power. Uh, maybe somebody in the American kind of, somebody poaching their players in the SEC. Now that would cause a stir, but we, I just told you why that's probably not going to happen. Dennis Dodge, CBS Sports columnist, covers college football, was at, of course, the TCU game and their win against Michigan. And, man, the dynamic type of players they have, even though the offense didn't put up crazy numbers, they found a way to counter punch anything that Michigan brought to the table as well. Uh, Dennis, what do you think about the, the the long term for TCU and the way that they've uh, – look, Baylor, look, from our – you know, we saw it here last year, they had the best – season in school history and they weren't really able to capitalize off it the next year tcu already recruiting everything else has capitalized off their best season in school history what makes sunny dykes different than dave aranda in that regard you think yeah and i think we'll see i i think the the dave aranda baylor question is still open-ended i mean you can't pronounce sentence on this after one down year after playing for a championship you know what he did there and what matt rule did there is Unbelievable, fantastic. So I still think Baylor's player. Yeah, I, I think for TCU, Sonny is just killing it. He changed the entire culture. There, it's a very open conference, not only to the media, but it's more friendly. Um, players have more freedom. They're allowed to speak their mind, speak to the press. Um, it's not restrictive. They're, uh, I guess, facilities-wise and infrastructure-wise, they're spending a lot of money and making a lot of improvements. So I, I, I think TCU stays like this as long as Sonny is there. And I think it really puts the onus on, you know, these four coming in. Okay, now we're getting a clearer picture of what you're coming into. It's not Texas and Oklahoma, but Texas wasn't pulling its weight anyway. Um, and so can there be a new power team or teams at the top that are in competition every year? TCU suggests yes. Dennis, uh, I've seen this pop up quite a bit lately, but do you, especially with, you know, various jobs coming up and the fact that I know Baylor at one point at least, you know, kicked the tires on, on looking at Sonny Dykes when they've had a couple of coach openings. Texas Tech, obviously, with the ties there before hiring Joey McGuire. Do you think his time at Cal kind of overshadowed how good of a coach he is just because of the circumstances he was in, if that makes sense? Yeah, I think he was a couple of a bad jobs, mediocre to bad jobs. Cal, Cal doesn't put the resources into college football. They, they haven't to this day um, for a few years. Don't forget Jeff, Jeff Tedford had Aaron Rodgers yeah. there. And, you know, they beat USC that one year. So something's changed there. And, and it, it hasn't changed back. And he took that job. And by the end of it, I think he was really frustrated. He, he In the middle of all that, he produced a Super Bowl quarterback, Jared Goff. So that, you know, that should be credited. Um, you know, Louisiana Tech is Again, not a power five. Uh, he did some good things there. They are dedicated to football in many ways, but it's still a, a group of five schools. So when the chance came just to go across town from SMU to uh, to TCU, we know that that drive is bigger than just on the you know on the interstate. That's a huge difference. Um, you know, TCU like SMU is private. But they they are in a power five and the Big Twelve. They're the only school in the country that can say they beat every conference opponent uh, and didn't lose this year. And I think that resonated with the committee, uh, despite the fact they lost to Kansas State, because they'd already beaten Kansas State. So uh, it's just you know it's a better job. And I think when Texas Tech came open, there was an opportunity there for TCU to do something. And I think they wanted to get in line, whatever that meant, with Gary Patterson to have a shot at Sonny. And it worked. Sure did. It's been amazing. And uh, we've yeah. been able to have uh, Sonny on. And you're right. You talk about night and day with the feeling around the program. 
with Sonny Dykes in charge, it is no question uh, a, a lot different. Uh, Dennis, thanks for the update on the transformational committee as well. Be interested in your article on the tampering part of it. And uh, also, thanks for your time and Happy New Year. Yeah, you too, guys. Thanks. Dennis Todd, CBS Sports with us on many things college football. Yeah, I didn't mean, by the way, I didn't mean that 